Now, I know some of you are going to look at the title of this video and say, what the fuck? Where is this coming from? You don't like Cena. You can't stand Cena. You detest many of the things that he represents. All of that is true. I'm no John China fan. I think he's the Dallas Cowboys of the WWE. Overpushed, overhyped, underperforms and underdelivers in the big spots. And just because he's always presented like he's the best, that doesn't make it true, right? And there is a clear agenda to relentlessly push him above all else, to put that brand out there. It's been the case for damn near two decades now. So no, I'm not a fan. And frankly, for years, I thought the WWE continued to get a diminishing return from him. Part of it was because of his stubborn stupidity to not really evolve or change his character, not work differently, not act differently. Like, shit's all the same. Like when Roman hit him with that zinger a couple of years ago, talk about calling him Missionary John. Truer words have never been spoken. That motherfucker's boring. I can just do the same shit. The same shit. And just because now more older fans have stopped watching because wrestling is just so damn lame, which has left a bunch of people watching wrestling that are maybe in their mid-20s to their early 30s that grew up or younger and don't know any fucking better and haven't bothered to learn any fucking better about John Cena and wrestling history and WWE history. You got a bunch of them that think that John Cena is the GOAT, which is just stupid on so many different levels. Now, it is totally fair to say like, hey, and I'm 42, so in terms of my lifetime in WWE, when you think about the most consistently featured, pushed, forced talent, he's somewhere in the top five to 10 in terms of prominent names, right? You've got the Hogan, Austin Rock, Vince tier. Cena's not on that tier. He's just not. But, you know, that second tier, like the five to 10, he's in the Triple H tier. He's in the Shawn Michaels tier. How about that? He's in the Breakfast Club tier where he belongs. <laughs> However, much as I can't stand the son of a bitch, as much as I think he's lame, he's predictable, and he's represented so much bad for WWE and wrestling over the years, what I cannot deny is that the WWE has invested a ton in the John Cena name, the John Cena brand, the John Cena likeness, intellectual property over the years. So for them to get anything when he comes back out of him is better for them. You're still getting returns on those investments from the mid 2000s and the 2010s, right? Like that's naturally a good thing for them, continuing to see a return for that. Agree. Like, as much as I don't like Cena, I can put aside my dislike for somebody, unlike many others, to think bigger picture for business, which is where I come to here with this take is bringing back John Cena and always having him lose is stupid. It's already bad enough every time he comes back. He's not changing shit about his character. He's the same old phony baloney motherfucker he's always been. It's the same shit, same type of promo. Let me try and bury the young talent, which, hey, Breakfast Club rules business. I'm all for it, damn it. But it's the same shit. When Robin said Missionary John, like, again, it fucking resonated because it's so goddamn true. It's the same shit all the time. And now you get into the place of when it comes to John Cena in singles matches, it's the same shit every time. He's always fucking losing. And I don't care what anybody tries to say or how anybody tries to spin it. It's getting to that Jericho shit of Jericho would always put somebody over in WWE. And at some point that does chip away at the brand. It does chip away at the importance and the way that talent is viewed. It introduces additional predictability 
into a product that always is best when there is spontaneity. Like if a John Cena is losing to an Austin Theory and then he's losing to a Solo Sokoa, that really isn't good for them. It really isn't because he's lost so many other singles matches now. Right? Like the WWE is trying their best to maneuver this and play this game by saying, hey, this is the good. This is the greatest of all time. And trying to artificially inflate their own talent saying, oh my God, Austin Theory beat the GOAT. Oh my God, Solo Sokoa beat the GOAT. Oh my God, whoever is next beat the GOAT. If he's the GOAT, what does that mean for the mod? If you can't see through this shit, which is transparent as hell, then I don't know what to tell you. I've got some of Volcano Insurance to sell you. But part of the problem with Cena over the last many years was diminishing returns because he didn't do shit any different. And at some point in time, fans lost interest. And yes, you can mitigate that some by he goes away for an extended period of time and then he fucking comes back. But at some point in time, if you always bring him in just to job, at some point in time, people will really just not care. And here's one of these weird kind of dynamics when it comes to professional wrestling. Yes, when you've got a talent in their mid to late 40s in WWE, maybe you're thinking, hey, you want to push the younger talent, right? You want to get them over. But they shouldn't always go over the older, more established star talent. You know, life in some ways is about obstacles and how you overcome obstacles, how you deal with mistakes, what you do to learn from them and correct them, how you deal with failure and how you use that as a learning experience, how you use that to motivate you. Having an older guy always lose to the low, younger guy, not only is boring and predictable as fuck, I'd argue it not only impacts negatively the Cena character that you're already getting diminishing returns from and have been for some time, you're only making that problem worse, you're also getting diminishing returns for the talents that are beating him. Are you going to tell me that you now have Austin Theory and Solo Sokoa on the same level? Is every talent that beats Cena on the same level? If they can all make this claim, then nobody really benefits from it. The Miz has spent the better part of the past 11, 12 years talking about beating John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 27. And when that happened, like beating Cena at Mania wasn't a thing that happened a lot, specifically in the main event, specifically for a title. It just didn't. So when the Miz is talking about it, it matters, right? And you get some value in return out of that. And his character certainly did. The WWE certainly did. But if in 2011, 2012, when The Rock beat Cena, it's a fucking Rock, so it's different. But let's say 2013, let's say The Rock beat him again. And then in 2014, Bray Wyatt beats him. And then you go, 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 go. And every single year, fucking John Cena is losing it at WrestleMania. It just doesn't have the same impact or pop. It becomes a pathetically predictable pattern of behavior. There's no, you know, potential for spontaneity, no surprise. And sometimes predictable is okay as long as you do it well, but you can only get away with that so much. And having John Cena lose like this, you could say, well, you know, it's just hedging your bets and utilizing him while you can while the strike was still going on, once the strike's done, he's gone. Okay. But he could still beat people, <laughs> right? Like, this is, to me, just not a good utilization of a name that you have invested so much in over the years. That still could provide you some value. And frankly, in my opinion, provide you a little more value if he beats somebody once in a while. The more you have John Cena lose, the less value you get out of him and the less value that other talent will get out of beating him. 
I'm just saying. And there's only one way to solve this. I'm just saying, John, you know you're free, damn it. WrestleMania 40, you're hearing the voices in your head. You've gone soft. I know a viper that is poised and ready to strike because he's tired of seeing the pathetic shell of a man you've become. Give me John Cena versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania 40. Breakfast Club business, bitches, this time it counts. You don't like this match? Well, fuck you! I need this! I want this! And deep, 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 deep down in the very cackles of your soul, you know, you, 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 all of you, know that you've got to have it. You know I'm right that Cena shouldn't be losing every match. That's dumb. And you know you want him in order to WrestleMania 40. Don't you 